Hi, Chem students. Let's talk about some colligative properties. Uh, we're going to start with evaporation rate and uh, look at what happens to the evaporation rate of a liquid as we add a solute to it. Uh, so first, let's just recap what evaporation is. Evaporation is this liquid to gas transition. Okay, it's the mechanism by which molecules vaporize. And there's a couple criteria. So if we take a look at a container right here of liquid A, if we look on the side, we can see there's, there's a surface up here. There's a surface that's a, an interface between the liquid and the gas um, um, phases. And we can also look straight down on top, and every molecule we see here would be then the actual surface molecules. So all of these molecules are pictured here by looking straight down on it. So the criteria to evaporate are pretty straightforward. First off, any molecule that wants to evaporate, or doesn't really want to, that can evaporate, must have enough energy to break the intermolecular forces holding it together, because that's what differentiates a liquid and a gas. So it's pretty, pretty simple to say that not all the molecules are going to have enough energy at a particular temperature, because the, the energy is spread out in a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution, with some molecules having more and some molecules having less. All right, that being said, what else would possibly hinder a molecule from evaporating? Well, to evaporate, you must be actually at the liquid-gas interface so that you can essentially be free. Uh, so these, this evaporating molecule must be able to leave the system, and that's where you leave. The exit door is at the surface. So that's what we need to evaporate right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, we're going to add to our system a solute. And it's going to be not just any sol solute, it's going to be a soluble one so that we get a solution, and also it's going to be non-volatile. By being non-volatile, we've allowed our we we've, we've said this particular type of molecule, whatever we're adding, it itself does not evaporate. So the liquid is becoming a solvent, and the stuff we're adding, the solute, is just this non-volatile stuff that's in there. It's the solute. All right, so we're going to add this stuff, and as you see, I've kind of put... I've put these in here already. There's some solute in here. And just by taking a look at this picture, you should immediately see that there is less, there's less positions for solvent molecules, less spatial positions. So by having less spatial positions at the surface, What's that going to do to the evaporation rate? Because that's what we really, we really want to know. Well, if there's less evaporating, uh, less molecules at the surface that can evaporate, we should see a lowering of the evaporation rate. There should be less of them that can evaporate. So we've just seen something very interesting. We've seen that adding a solute will decrease the evaporation rate. There we go. Well, hold on a second. What if I add more solute? What should be the effect then? Well, as you can see, I've added a few more of these molecules in uh, the, uh, the solute molecules into my solution, and there's even less spatial positions now that are taken up by the solvent. Remember, the solvent are the little hollow spheres. That's what we started with. And the red, the red dots, the red, those are actual solvent or solute molecules. So if there's more solute, there's even going to be less evaporation. So what we see is that the amount of solute we put in, the number of solute particles we put in, will affect the evaporation rate by lowering it. So let's summarize what we just found out. The evaporation rate of a liquid will be reduced when it becomes a solvent by the mere act of adding a non-volatile solid. And as the number of solute particles increase, if we put more and more solute in, that evaporation rate will continue to get lower and lower and lower. And I, I make this second statement for a reason. This is, we didn't talk about what kind of molecule we were putting in there. All we said was it was soluble and that it was non-volatile. But the type of molecule didn't matter, as long as it matched those conditions. So the type of soluble solute didn't matter. 
And that's why this is called a colligative property. A colligative property is one that only cares about how many particles, not the type. So this is important for us. If we're trying to explain a colligative property, we don't discuss the intermolecular forces. We don't talk about energy changes because we're going to assume that if we're adding a solute, that the solute was in the same room, was at the same temperature, and therefore the average energy didn't change. We're not going to make any kind of assumptions like that. We're going to talk purely about spatial positions and how it affects the ability for the solvent to evaporate. So that's it. What you're going to find out later is uh, that these, that this one little property change here affects other aspects of our system, such as the vapor pressure and the boiling point. So more on that later.